Bro, I just feel like, you know, like the more success I get over the years and shit, I can't do half of the shit I, I, I used to do. You know, I can't just be outside just kicking it outside on some on some dumb sh- young dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't go to certain places. I'm not trying to pop outside all the time. I can't do certain shit. I might not pick up my phone all the time, but I'm always there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you hit me, t- shoot me a text, whatever, like. But I feel like the more success I get, just niggas just start to just get shitty. Sometimes, bro, people uh, hate you just off the simple fact how other motherfuckers fuck with you. Somebody would not like you for the simple reason that everybody else fuck with you. Like, it's crazy. Like, motherfuckers hate that they fuck with you like that. Motherfuckers rather it be them. This is Sad Boy Radio. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sad Boy Radio. I'm your host, Matt. And today we got a very special guest. Man, he's a Summer Smash performer. He recently signed to No More Heroes. And I definitely want to talk about that shit, bro. But real quick, go ahead and introduce yourself. OG Steve-O, you know. <laughs> North Side's truth. That's all I got to say. If you know, you know. If you don't, you're going to know soon. But real quick, go ahead and talk about that relationship with No More Heroes. You know, what does that look like? Well, for one, you know, Locker, that's my, that's my boy. So it's like, bro, just believe in me. You know what I'm saying? He just been showing love, just been... Trying to help out where he can and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Like he got mad relationships and just good connections. Everybody know who Locke is. Everybody know what No More Heroes do. So, bro, just been helping me make them connections. You know. The reason I asked that is because Danielle had, you know, like I said, she reached out to me. She said, "Hey, I'm the A and R for No More Heroes. Uh, we just signed Stevo." So, trying to understand that, right? Because No More Heroes isn't a label necessarily. They're an entertainment service. Yeah, they're a production. A production company. Okay. So which is the same thing. It's a whole bunch of different little deals out there, you know what I'm saying? Like distribution deals, production deals, real life, record deals, single deals, whatever. So like we just got like a production situation going on where they just gonna just mass produce everything. Everything I already been doing myself, they just gonna do it times five. Mm-hmm. So that's really pretty much what it is. You know what I'm saying? We just we just came back from New York and shit and we were just on some Real business shit out there, you know what I'm saying? We, we got a lot of work done. Like, we was out there for a week and had shit to do from as soon as we wake up, motherfucking 8, 9 o'clock in the morning until, like, 4 a.m. Like, so we was just out there working and shit. Like, they hasn't putting the motherfucker to work for real. You're working, working. There's no more waking up at 7, 8 o'clock, waiting till 4 p.m. to finally get some shit done, huh? Shit crazy, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> shit be moving, you know what I'm saying? But... And it was grateful is what I asked for. How did that relationship with uh, Laka and No More Heroes begin? And, you know, what do you hope to gain from this working relationship? Yeah, you know, me and Laka are both Nigerian, so we kind of just already kind of already been around the same community. We all in the same community and shit, so it's like he just, he, he see the potential. He see what it is, you know what I'm saying? So we like, shit, it's joint, you know, joint forces, two heads better than one. We put that, shit, put that shit together. And I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to, just just build with somebody that I know. I'd rather have a business relationship with somebody that I know personally, you know what I'm saying, versus a, a stranger. You gonna give him OG Locker or what? Yeah, Locker could be OG. <laughs> I'm going to give him a, uh, I'm gonna give him a little chain of everything. Hey, you got the chain yet? I don't want to get no OG chain until I can get, like, 10 of them bitches, you know what I'm saying? So I can be shining, my brother can be shining, my brother can be shining, my homie can be shining, my security can be shining, you know what I'm saying? So how many of you are there? It's a lot of us. It's a lot of us. I ain't gonna lie, it's a lot of us. Like, I ain't never just sat and just counted. It just be a lot of us. It just be a lot of OGs with me, you know what I'm saying? It just be all my homies growing up and whatnot, just... It's a lot of us. I ain't gonna count. The first time I came across OG, I was talking to him earlier. It was OG Denzo. I was just scrolling through Instagram. I really don't know how I came across his page, but I heard, you know, a little snippet. I'm like, damn, that's just kind of hard. Yeah, let me, bro, hard. Let bro, me hard. go ahead and follow him. And yeah, man, he gave me the follow. We haven't gotten in contact yet, but man, I was like, damn, that's just cold. And then I don't know how the fuck I ended up putting two and two together, but I was like, damn, they're the same group. Yeah, I'm, I'm funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a couple of us going crazy, bro. My boy Denzel, though, he's so hard, though, man. Free Shorty, though, man. My boy my boy locked down right now, but he about to be back real soon, though. You know what I'm saying? Damn, see, I didn't even know that. Free him for real. When he back down, you got to give him that interview. I know he's going to have a lot of shit to talk about. Yeah, especially getting out. Yeah, he's going to sure. have a lot of shit <laughs> to talk <laughs> about. <laughs> So Mike Will, he he produces a lot of your shit. Yeah, he done produce all my shit. That's my that's my producer, OG Mike Will. That's my OG producer, my in house producer. He produced a lot of my shit. Him, 
all day, JTK, Kari, Go Hayes. Talk about that relationship, you and Mike Will, right? You guys grew up together. You guys have known each other forever and a half. You know, how has the relationship evolved as you guys have both continued to grow? I met Mike Will when I first was in, like, sixth grade. We went to St. Like, elementary school. We didn't really fuck with each other like that, though. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was, like, the new kid, you know what I'm saying? Everybody be look, trying to tease on the new kid and shit. He was one of them motherfuckers, too, so. But I wasn't going for that shit. And then, like, we just, we just ended up just being cool in elementary school. We was just cool. We wasn't locked in. We wasn't super homies or none of that shit. And then we finna go to uh, high school and shit. We, like... Shit, we might we finna go to the same high school. We at least we 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 might as well go into that motherfucking high school knowing somebody. Yeah. And then we just got cool like that from riding a bus every day or taking the train every day or whatever. Then we just get end up getting super duper cool, like over cool. Like that's my that's that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like I love that nigga. Like with everything in me, that's my brother. Like it's like that. It's a real, that's a that's a real solid nigga right there. I ain't gonna lie. When I first started rapping, he was going half with me, paying for beats and shit. And he getting that, man, I ain't gonna lie, like, that 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 paying for beat shit, dead. I'm finna learn how to produce myself. I say, yeah. He said, yeah, I give it like the next year, I'm gonna be producing all your shit. His ass learned how to produce, he was producing all my shit in six months. That's the type of people you need around you, bro. Yeah, bro, everybody around me is like that, bro. My manager, Neeks, bro, like, he just always been a smart-ass motherfucker, just always smart, good grades, like, just really been a real math savvy math savvy motherfucker you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so he like well i'm finna start reading up on the little management shit and i'm finna manage you and then my homie lj he just like all right well i'm finna pick up a camera and start shooting like he was that like you know how everybody got that one friend who just always recording and just he got all the memories on his phone and shit of it's everything shit you don't even remember that was him so it's like fuck he might as well you know he start he start start shooting videos and shit he start shooting videos my boy Glizzy, that's my other, that's like my role manager and shit. He do the same thing that he was with me. From when I first started doing my first shows, I was scared to get on the stage. He, I'm finna get, come on, we both finna be on this bitch. He know my songs better than I know my shit. He like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm finna be your role manager. I'm finna be your hype man. Like, and that's how the whole team came together. Literally just off of just, we, we see that we, you know, like we needed something. Everybody came together to pitch in for that shit because they seen the, they see the high picture, they see the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? Somebody sees one thing you need, and all right, I got you, I got you, right? I think of DJ Drip and Joe. You know Drip, right? That's my boy. And you know Joe, his photographer, mm -hmm. right? I find that shit so crazy because it's like one day one person decides, okay, I'm gonna be the entertainer. Okay, I'll be the documenter. And that's just, you know, you keep growing together, and that's just fucking beautiful, bro. That's how you get a strong team, because if everybody trying to be the face of this shit, it's like, that shit not going to work. Everybody can't be the point guard. We can't have a team with five point guards on the court. It's just, that shit not going to work. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a point guard. You got to have a center. You got to have a small forward. You got to know your role, and that's the most important thing. The title of this episode, it's Can't Grow With Everyone. Yeah, on phone though, man. To they need to put that in the Bible. You can't grow with everyone. Phone no, you cannot. And the reason I chose that was because, you know, when we had talked, you said, you know, managing success while also managing your relationships, maintaining these relationships. You also said toxic relationships, but man, I could go on for days about that shit. <laughs> That's how you got started rapping, bro. I'm oh sure God, you could go oh on God, talking about oh that God. shit That's too. That's facts. That's facts. Going back to that, it's like you can't grow with everyone. And that's a hard reality that we all have to face, especially as you continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. For you, you started out, you know, you grew up with a lot of these people. You all went to the same high school, it seems like. A lot of you went to Vaughn, right? There's only one of you that went to Prosser. Yeah, out of, out of like, the, the core uh, the core of the management team and shit, only one of us went to Prosser. All of us went to Vaughn. When I saw that shit, I was like, damn, that's kind of cool because a lot of the people I interview, they're from all over the fucking place, bro. We putting on, bro. We putting on, bro. We really we really putting a face to this shit for real, you know what I'm saying? Signing with No More Heroes, that isn't the first major move you've made. You performed at Summer Smash. That's fucking huge. And you gave the anecdote before about how when you first saw your face on the pass, the artist pass for Summer Smash, that, that shit was fucking crazy. Yeah, that shit's still crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the first day where it's like, damn, like, this is our this is our first taste of, like, the big stage, like, the big league, like, this, that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one of the biggest stages, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the U.S., it's one of the biggest stages. That shit, like, Lollapalooza rolling out, all that shit. So when we there... They got us a little section back there. My name on that bitch. I'm down. They got all my. They had all all my uh, favorite snacks and shit in that motherfucking shit. Then they give me the, my uh, manager come with a LeBron envelope. 
He put a little uh look face card shit out. I'm getting that damn. What the f- the fuck? I ain't send I ain't, I ain't sent him this picture. They you know what I'm saying? This bitch raw as hell. This, that bitch was that shit was so raw. I ain't gonna lie. That shit was so raw. They took the Instagram picture and slapped oh, that. Oh god, bitch that's, on that's exactly what they did, bro. That shit was so raw, bro. I ain't never had my face on no card like that. That shit was like a trading card. Hey, you still got that card? That bitch hanging up in the crib. <laughs> I got my I gave my OG one and shit. She got that bitch hanging up in the crib. That was my first ever festival. I don't even go to festivals. I don't even attend festivals. The first time I went to the Lyrical Festival was like 2019. I had I had snuck in there and shit like, like with my homie and shit. He was he was performing and shit. He, he passing the pass around. I, I even snuck backstage. I was able to get backstage, right? I'm trying to go backstage. Security on bullshit. I see um Honey K track. That's uh uh with Wine 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 W Melly uh manager and shit. I see him and shit. He he knew me because I had met them like a couple months back at NIU. They had came out there and I was kicking it with him. That's another story and shit. So I see him. He instantly get me back there. And I'm I'm on I'm on stage. I see I was on stage when Tekka performed or some other motherfuckers. I'm just seeing how the crowd rock. I'm like, I told myself on Jesus Christ that day. I say, man, I'm performing at the next one. Like, I'm going to be at the next one. I'm going to perform at the next one. I don't know how it's going to happen, but that shit going to happen. And you made that shit happen? 2020 hit COVID. No festival. 2021 hit festival. I'm on the lineup, main stage on that bitch. Like, I opened up. I opened up on the main stage. I was the first performance on the main stage, and that shit was fucking crazy. So how'd you make it happen? I assume through your connection through lyrical. Uh, you got the lemonade stand. The first time, bro, reached out to me. Uh, get me on the lemonade lemonade stand shit. You know what I'm saying? I do the lemonade stand shit. That shit was cool. They gave me hella gear and shit. And I just after that, I just kept like just we just kept. A uh, strong relationship. Like they steady telling me come back to the office. I'm coming back. I'm kicking it with them. I'm going to motherfucking baseball games and shit. Like, like we just chilling. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, bro. Like after I did the after I did the um the interview and shit. Right after I did the interview and shit. It was like cold birthday one day. Right. It was cold birthday one day. They all downtown at some club and shit. They uh phone him, rent it, bro, ran out the whole club. He ran out the whole club and shit for his birthday, bro. A nigga ran out the club, bro, and was serving Ace of Spade for free. Ace of Spade for free. I'm like, nah. So, bro, I was at a birthday dinner and shit, right? I was at a birthday dinner for some shorty, bro. Like, he called me. He say, he said, hey, where you at? I said, shit, I'm at this birthday dinner. He was like, shit, you know, today, cold birthday, he throwing a party and... He said he wants you to slide like right now and shit. I instantly tell the waiter, bring my check. Bro, left my food there, left that motherfucker, went to that party. We was in that bitch turned. That bitch was raw as hell. After that, we just been just locked. Like, we just been locked. You took the girl? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had to ask the question, bro. No, sir. The part that matters is you were there with Cole Bennett fucking drinking Ace of Spades. Ace of Spade, bro. I'm I was drinking Ace of Spade with Cole Bennett, bro. So when's the video coming? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. That's top secret or what? <laughs> Something like that, right? Something like that. Man. <laughs> when the video coming, y'all gonna know. Just know that. So how do you feel like Summer Smash helped you elevate as a performer? Well, for one, that shit got me like mad fans and shit. You know, they got a crazy ass fan base. So that shit got me mad fans. Like, my motherfucking Instagram shot up. Like, everything shot up. I just had hella motherfuckers message me from all different states and shit. Like, motherfuckers not even from Chicago and shit. So that shit helped like that. And it's just a good look. Like, you know what I'm saying? I did a, one of the biggest festivals of the year. You can't even deny that shit. Like, But not even, like, your platform, right? Because right now you're kind of talking about the platform. Obviously, your follower account's going to go up after you perform at such a large festival. But from that experience, how do you feel like you grew as a performer? Bro, when, when I first got on that stage, first of all, that's, that main stage... That shit is fucking huge. Like, on Jesus Christ, that shit is. How wild would you say that shit is? That shit, I don't know. That shit like a like it's like running across a motherfucking basketball court, bro. Like that bitch big as fuck. Not as big as a basketball court, but that bitch big as fuck. Like, so I'm so you know, on that stage you got to utilize everyone on the stage. Like, and then it's it's like a T shape. So you got the thing all the way back there. You got to run all the way back this side, this wing, and I was utilizing everywhere. So it just made me realize, like, I could do this shit. I rocked out. I had to open the set, so it wasn't 100,000 motherfuckers in there. But it's probably like 4,000 people out there, right? So I rocked out in front of 4,000 people, and they was all turned. Like, motherfuckers, 
You know how like they have a gate separating uh GA and, and VIP or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Bro, motherfuckers was jumping the GA gate, like helping their friends jump over. Motherfuckers falling over the gate. As I'm performing, people was jumping the gate, and I'm seeing this shit as I'm performing. Like, motherfuckers jumping the gate, like that shit just I don't just did something to me, you know what I'm saying? Like it just made me even more hungrier for this shit. Like I wanna do this shit every day. Yeah. I wanna do this, what I'm doing right now, every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that shit just that shit really turned me into an animal. I'm like, nah, I need this. Like, that sh- that shit like a high. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That, that shit like a high. Like, I need this. Now bro. you're like, damn, I need this shit. Yeah. Like for real, yeah. junkie shit oh, type God, shit. Oh God, I need this for real, bro. Just you describing that fucking experience, bro. I was just about to ask you, like, what the fuck did that feel like? Cause that's that shit's crazy to be watching kids jump over a fucking railing while you're performing. God damn, they ain't even see the shit. Cause I'm locked in on the crowd. Now what it was the next day, somebody posted. Uh, this dude that worked for like Revolt TV, he posted like a clip of me performing. He was like, OG Steel performing and uh, kids is jumping the gate. I seen that shit. I'm, what the fuck? That shit was, like, that shit was raw as hell. Like, that shit crazy. Mm-hmm. Jumping the gate. Like, motherfuckers real live jumping the gate. People falling over the gate. They busting their shit getting over that gate to come and get near the motherfucking crowd. And the energy was just so crazy. They was motherfucking doing a mosh pit and shit. I ain't never had no motherfucker do no motherfucking mosh pit. And then, like, before the show, we, like, my homie, like, bro, you need to throw water in the crowd. I said, I'm not throwing no water in the crowd. Like, you know, some motherfuckers don't fuck with that shit. Like, there's people down there, they, they screaming, throw the water, throw the water, throw They want us to throw the water. They they bring us hella water bottles. All of us, we start throwing that bitch in the crowd. They was, that shit was so fucking turnt. That shit was so turnt. Like, that shit, man, that, that, I ain't gonna lie, that shit was crazy. I, I, I was talking about that shit for days after, like, then after that, I, Move to the next. I'm trying to see what's 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 the next big thing. I basked in that shit for like two days. Then I'm like, all right, it's time for me to go on to the next shit. I talk about that too much. You know, the fact that like we forget about that we don't take the time to enjoy the accomplishments we've already achieved because we're like, man, fuck that shit. On to the next. I feel like it's a gift and a curse to think like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause my 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 uh my big brother tell me all the time, he like, you too hard on yourself. Like, nigga, you just did summer smash. Why are you thinking about I said, man, bro, I just, I'm just ready to get this shit. Like, I, I appreciate that shit. I'm grateful for that shit. But I'm ready to get that shit. I'm trying to do new, newer heights, you know what I'm saying? I can't stay complacent. Not even for a second, I can't stay complacent. The relationship that you have with your brother, how do you feel like that contrast has really boosted your way of thinking? Like, I mean, like, I tell my brother everything. Like, my brother sees everything. He's with me everywhere. Like, at all these shows and at all these events and shit, he always with me. He right by my side. Like, and, and my brother, he just started rapping, too. So he see this shit from a different perspective, too, because he's seeing it like, damn, my little brother, he, 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 this is shit I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to this point, you know what I'm saying? So my brother, he be telling me that, and that shit just be like, yeah, I feel it, bro, but we, we trying to get way bigger than what this is. It's like, I'm grateful for where I am, you know what I'm saying? I always am. I'm always grateful for where I am. But I just want to be somewhere else. You want to reach that new height. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just want to reach that new height, you know what I'm saying? But he just always assures me, like, bro, you got to just calm down. You got to chill. Like, you guys got to take this shit day by day. I be wanting this shit to happen, like, yesterday. That's how people start to quit. Mm-hmm. You want that shit right now. But right now, it's not realistic. You got to go one step, two step. You know, one thing that they told me in college, I was doing my associates when I was, like, 17. And they were like, you can't eat an elephant in a day. You got to do it bite by bite. So I guess I always carried that with me, right, when it came to stressing about the big picture. Yeah. I'm not going to get there in one day. I'm not even going to get there in a week. But if I consistently do this shit, every day for a year or two years, three years, eventually I'm going to get that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do you feel like the experience of Summer Smash affected the way you view yourself? I view myself as as, as that nigga. Like, I'm that nigga. Like, I'm a fucking superstar. I know that. And that's me saying this shit in my most humblest, the, the humblest way I can. And Summer Smash just proved that. Like, literally, like, you can't fucking pay to be on Summer Smash. Like, that's... That's a stage where you got to really put in that, that 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 elbow work to really get there. And I got there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do motherfucking Rolling Louds and shit, Governor's Ball. I'm trying to do... I'm just ready for bigger shit. I'm just ready to do bigger shit. Like, that's just how I am. Like, I used to hoop. I always wanted to do better. Always. That's how I am in life. I want to do better. Why stop at... Why stop at doing one festival? Why I can't do ten festivals? Mm-hmm. 
realistically, you probably can't do 10 festivals in a year because of contracts and all that shit, though. But, you know, figuratively speaking. But do you feel like from that point on, something flipped? So, obviously, you keep on growing. Mm -hmm. Especially you. Just like I said, a lot of people have been telling me, get OG Steve-O, get OG Steve-O. A year ago, that wasn't the name I was hearing. A year and a half ago, that wasn't the name I was hearing. So you're continuously growing and getting better each and every day. Back in 2019, you know, or when did you actually start taking music seriously? I'll say 2018. 2018, 2019. Prior to that, you weren't even taking music seriously. Not at all. Your view of yourself was, I just make music for fun. You get to Summer Smash... You're that dude. I can't say I can't say the word, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm I'm a, a get canceled. <laughs> I'm a real artist. People see me as a real artist, but I was thinking like that before I did Summer Smash. I did Summer Smash, and we we in 23 now, so I did Summer Smash in 21, right? But I was in 2020. I was seeing myself as that. In 2019, I'm still in school and shit, so it's like I'm part time with this shit. Like I'm got a I'm, I'm a student, but I just rap. You know what I'm saying? So 2020, that's my first year being able to... You were locally famous. Yeah, I was just locally famous. Like, I was just locally known at school and some places in Iraq. And I was like, you know. Like, if you know, you know. Like, bro, I got a... I damn got a... My, my streaming damn near come from New York. More New York than Chicago, too. Like, it's crazy. Like, they like really, like, neck and neck, for real. Like... What's the streaming numbers look like right now? We damn got, like, a mail on, like, Apple Music or some shit. Like... 800,000 on, like, Spotify or some shit like that. YouTube, that shit, YouTube been going up. Motherfuckers will do, well, last video we dropped got, like, 70-some K in a month. Y'all be going hard with the visuals, for yeah, real. Yeah, trying. The yeah. visuals where it's at. I like, watching, I like watching music videos, so I try to give some raw shit. I want to take it back real quick to your childhood, bro. You grew up in Rogers Park. You were raised by Nigerian parents, first generation. So there's a lot to unpack right there, right? Because... When people think of Rogers Park, yeah, it's the north side, but it's not the safe part of the north side. Rogers Park and Uptown is like that shit up north, but it's like it get it real life get cracking there. Like like it's real life that there. Like motherfuckers, I don't really gotta speak too much. If you know, you know. They don't really put shit like that on the news and shit though, because you know they try to maintain this perfect picture of the north side but it get like that like you got loyola right there you got northwestern so definitely they're, they're not promoting that shit at all exactly so why why would they mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't make no sense but if you from there you grew up there you know like you just know like it real life get cracking over there how did the way you were raised family wise shape you i'm first generation born in the u.s both my parents from nigeria we all tight, you know, like, we, we super tight-knit because majority of my family live in Nigeria. So we kind of really all we got for real, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a couple cousins and shit out here, but a majority of my family, more than half of my family is out there. So we tight-knit. So it's like anybody who's in my circle, I just look at them as an extension of my immediate family. Like, anybody who's in my circle, you my brother, like, we locked in, we tied. There's no no flip-floppy shit, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's, that's, that's why I moved the way I moved, too. And then... Like, Nigerian, we just based on, we just raised on certain morals and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, I just do unto others how I want to be done unto me, you know what I'm saying? What's one of those morals you carry with you still to this day? Just being a real person, being a genuine person, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to fuck with you whether you got $100,000 in your bank account or you got $5 in your bank account. I'm not going to treat them two motherfuckers different. Y'all still people at the end of the day. You know, I ask this because I'm very big. I was a psychology major in college. So I'm very big on the way that you're raised impacts the way that you think, impacts the way that you move, especially once you're older, right? Because you go through so much in this life. You face traumatic experiences. You you go through those relationships where that shit's toxic as fuck and it fucks you up. Or you have a friendship that you know, meant a lot to you, but you can't rock with those people no more. Mm -hmm. The way that you're raised, the people that raise you, your parents, they instill these morals. They instill these things that they want you to carry with you the rest of your life. You know, every time you see me, you look at my music videos, you see me around. I want the same motherfuckers. Like, I want the same motherfuckers. For years, I've been with the same motherfuckers. My pops told me, he told me, like, the more people you be with, the more you got to watch. You know what I'm saying? Like, the more attention you got to pay. And you would think that the more people you're around... The more homies you got around with you, the less you attention you have to pay. Just because, you know, motherfuckers going to be on S for you. 
But it's like, nah, because not only you got to watch out for yourself, but you got to watch these motherfuckers. You're not going to have a group of 50 motherfuckers in every single one of these motherfuckers' law. Like, it's just not going to happen. Bro, it's just like Drake said, bro, in fucking energy, you know. I can't even say the bar, bro, because he's fucking, you know. But he's, he's basically says, but my acting days are over. Fuck them for life. It be like that. No, I do. It do be, bro. It's, 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 it's niggas that used to be in my videos. I used to rock with, you know what I'm saying? They are my homies now, but... Um, bro, fuck them niggas, like, disrespectfully. It's just how it is. What happened that broke those relationships? Bro, I just feel like, you know, like, the more success I get over the years and shit, I can't do half of the shit I, I, I used to do. You know, I can't just be outside just kicking it outside on some on some dumb sh young dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't go to certain places. I'm not trying to pop outside all the time. I can't do certain shit. I might not pick up my phone all the time, but I'm always there, you know what I'm saying? Like, you hit me, shoot me a text, whatever, like. But I feel like the more success I get, just niggas just start to just get shitty. Sometimes, bro, people uh, hate you just off the simple fact how other motherfuckers fuck with you. Somebody would not like you for the simple reason that everybody else fuck with you. Like, it's crazy. Like, motherfuckers hate that they fuck with you like that. Motherfuckers rather it be dumb and motherfuckers just be on hating shit, like. Niggas be weird, bro. I used to always think that hatred builds more friendships than anything. When two people hate you the same amount, they become best fucking friends, bro. Now they two hating ass bitches. Bro. Hey, that's bro, literally how I be, though. Oh, Jesus that Christ, that's how I be, that boy. It's literally two hating ass, broke ass niggas, bro. Like, fuck them niggas. D disrespectfully, to them, bro. So let's more move towards environment-wise, bro. How did the environment that you were raised in shape you? Just being outside and being around. You know, I grew up going to hooping at Loyola Park. All the shorties, we all used to go to Loyola Park. Everybody used to be at Loyola Park. Gang banging ass niggas at Loyola Park. So it just used to be always fuck shit. And it's always, and it's hella, and it's Mexicans that live in Rogers Park. You know how it is. Like, they be getting on that. Like, I done got, Mexicans done got on that with me on, on plenty of occasions, bro. Like, plenty of occasions, bro. Like, nigga, quick, I'm fast as hell. Bro, I hear that motherfucker whistle up north, I'm gone. Everybody, you live in Rogers Park, you know that whistle. You hear that whistle, and you black. Get the fuck on. Like, it's just it's a, a lot of a lot of a lot of fuck shit used to happen out there. You know what I'm saying? But I I try my best to stay clear of that shit. But that shit just raised me how like that shit happened everywhere in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even got to be the most gangster nigga. You could be a regular ass nigga that just live in the hood and fuck shit is still gonna come follow you. You gotta know how to maneuver through that shit and I know how to move through all that shit. How did it shape your mentality? Shit, I'm just not no pussy, like. Like, and and, and I see shit for what it is. I don't, I'm not finna prove myself for the next motherfucker. That shit over with. I'm also not trying to put myself in no line of danger either. Like, I, I, I know what come with this shit. Like, I done lost so many motherfuckers behind this shit. So it's like, fuck that shit. That's really what it is. I'm just trying to get some money, to be honest with you. Niggas, niggas don't like money, bro. Niggas rather just kill motherfuckers. That's exactly what you said in Hollywood, bro. Tough niggas get touch cooker. You said, I don't come around no more. They think I'm Hollywood. If they see me, would they try it? Man, they probably would. I don't handle shit with violence, but he think he tough. That's really what it is, though. I don't do, this, I don't do the shit I used to do. I don't be at the places I used to be at. Motherfuckers that think you just think you better than them. But it's like, nah, I really got... I got shit to live for. Like, I got shit I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get my OG in a new crib. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to call my moms to mind, tell her, like, quit your job. Don't put no two-week notice in fuck them people. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do. So it's like standing outside and doing young hood rat shit. It's just not where it's sat no more. You're not trying to do hood rat shit with your friends no more? Man, I do hood rat shit with my friends in Miami. We could, <laughs> we could do hood rat shit playing, playing, playing in the motherfucking uh, Lambos and shit. We could do we could do hood rat shit. Oh, bro, we could do bougie hood rat shit. You want to do the rich hood rat shit? I want to do the rich hood rat <laughs> shit. I want to do rich hood rat shit on oh, God. That's what I want to do. I'm sure this song feels even more relevant to you now, right? Yeah, and it's only going to get more and more relevant the, 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 the bigger a nigga get. So, yeah, I don't come around no more. I think I'm Hollywood. You just got to think I'm Hollywood. In what ways do you feel like you've changed the most? I think I'm just more mature. Like, I'm just mature. Like, shit, used to, shit that used to bother me don't bother me no more. I'm, uh, you know, uh, you don't fuck with me? Oh, uh, okay. It's cool. Take a number. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you just can't. I'm just, I just don't give a fuck about what nobody else thinks about me except for what I think about myself. I don't care who you are. Like, I don't just, I don't care what nobody thinks. That's how I am. Mm -hmm. That's how you got to move. Cause it's like, whether you do everything right, motherfuckers still going to talk shit. 
You do everything wrong, motherfucker still gonna talk shit. You die, motherfucker still gonna talk shit. So people gonna talk shit regardless of the fact. So just do what the fuck you wanna do. But as a person, right? Because I feel like everything right now is kind of externally. Mm. We're looking at this person, that person, this person. But for you as a person on the inside, how do you feel like you've changed? How do you feel like the way that you think, your views, your thoughts, your morals? Bro, I feel like I've always had the same morals since I was a shorty. Like, since I was young, I've been the same motherfucker. I just got more shit. But I, I, I got the same morals and everything. Like, the only thing that changes, I personally don't give a fuck about nothing else that if it's not for the betterment of me you know what i'm saying like if anything costs my peace i'm leaving that shit alone i like having a peace of mind now like i'm grown i don't want to do i don't want the toxic situations and shit i don't want to be worried about this or that i'm worried about me and getting to where i need to go you know what i'm saying like and i'm just happier as a person too as i than i've been earlier years so what do you think was holding you back really i feel like just being around just the wrong energy you know what I'm saying? Like, being around the wrong energy alone is, it can fuck you up in the long run, too. I just let go of all the baggage. You know what I'm saying? Like, old hoes be baggage. Old friends, baggage. The depression, all that shit. All that shit is baggage. You know what I'm saying? You just got to just try to be happy with life. See, my problem is that I reminisce a lot. Mm -hmm. I reminisce on the people that aren't around me anymore. Mm -hmm the relationships that I don't have anymore. Yeah. When I went to college, actually it started in high school. I started to drift away from the people that I grew up with. Mm. When I went to college, that drift became bigger because now I'm living in a world where there's college parties, mm. there's all this work that I have to do. And then there's my homies who are over here starting relationships, mm. like fully committed type relationships and getting jobs that they have to attend to. Focus on that. And you notice that these relationships that you once had with these people aren't the same. You see more people coming in and out of your life because, you know, I'm sure you're familiar NIU, bro. Yeah. That's all that shit is, is you meet somebody next semester. They has there. gone, God. <laughs> they tell you that too when you first get down and they say, look at these faces. The next semester, you're not gonna see these motherfuckers. Boy, they has disappeared like magic. They'll text you and they'll be like, "Yeah, bro, I'm coming back next semester." They say, "Yeah, bro, I just, I just, I just took one semester off." But I mentioned that because these are relationships that you notice the drift, and then after college, there's ah oh, man, I saw this TikTok. I keep referencing things. My bad. I saw this TikTok. It's a line graph, and it shows the different types of relationships you have, right? Mm -hmm. Your parents. So it goes like this. It goes like that, mm -hmm. and then you guys come back together mm -hmm. because. When you're little, they raise you. You're close as fuck mm. with them. You become a teenager, you drift, drift like a motherfucker. On you get older, mm. you come back together. Mm. Your homies that you grow up with in mm. childhood, you're like this, and then eventually it goes like that. And then never meet back again, mm -mm. Mm, bro. These relationships, it's like damn. Like I thought we were gonna be close for a long time. I thought we were gonna be ride or die for you know till the end. So I think about this, and I know you can relate because. When you hit that spot in college, it's like, damn, I really thought that these relationships would have lasted for longer. And you start to feel bad because you're like, damn, it, what, am I the problem? I'm the one that left. I'm the one that really put that strain. And now I don't even know how to talk to you anymore. You know what I'm saying? So for you, what are some relationships that you feel like you had to cut off? Bro, it was really just like some niggas who just grew up in the hood with me. Like niggas who just grew up in Rogers Park with me. Like, we was just cool. We was all living there. We drift apart. Motherfuckers came together a little bit, like, doing college and shit. Because, you know, everybody want to come down to NIU and kick it for the parties and the hoes and shit. So motherfuckers was coming out there with me frequently. But it's like, as the music shit started going up and up, a nigga just started getting weird. So I just had to just cut that. I'm not even going to play with that shit. Like, I literally, I literally cut a motherfucker off just like that. Mm -hmm. I tell a motherfucker, too, I'm like, yeah, like you over with. Like I don't, I don't even want to kick it. Like I don't even, want, I don't want to kick it. I don't, I don't want. I tell, I don't want you on none of my social media, none of that shit. Cut them off like that. Cold yeah, turkey, like boom, that. all of that. Erase, erase them, erase, erase the motherfucker, bro. I completely erase the motherfucker out of sight, out of mind. Are any of those relationships ones that you wish you could have held on to? No, not one of them. Damn, you really go. You really all right. Fuck them, and that's yeah, it, bro. Not that's one all of them. Right. Any nigga when I was younger thinking like, oh, we finna be locked in for the forever. They still around. 
everybody just be dead weight, man. Some motherfucker just be dead weight. Can't grow with everyone. You can't grow with everyone, bro. You can't grow. It's so easy to think that, man, when I get on, man, I'm finna have all these motherfuckers when I'm taking care of all y'all. Y'all finna be living in my career. We finna be that shit over with. Like, that shit it just can't happen. It's just, you gonna run yourself dry. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers do that shit and find themselves right back at where they started at. What did it take you to learn that, though? I feel like we're very vague right now. I feel like the people that know, they know. It just took niggas being on weird shit, bro. Like, bro, certain niggas, bro, certain fr- friends will get mad that you hanging out with a certain other friend more than you hanging out with them. That shit's weird. Like, if we all fuck with each other, if me, you, and dude fuck with each other, we all rock with each other, why are you getting mad? You feel like we spend more time with each other. Like, that shit weird. Like, that's weird, that's weird shit, you know what I'm saying? So niggas start doing that shit Like niggas start Getting on weird shit bro And I'm just like Nah like You you want some weird shit So before that shit Turn into Some more weird shit Or to some Fuck shit Where somebody could get hurt Or whatever the case is I'm just gonna leave you Where you at Cause you want some tweak shit You know what I'm saying Like Bro I swear to god Niggas are getting mad Motherfuckers would be like Damn why you post this nigga For his birthday But you ain't post me For my birthday that's that's bitch shit. That's like girl shit. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 women shit. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird shit. As a man, how you posting Instagram? Like, come on, bro. Like, people just be weird, bro. I feel like motherfuckers be letting social media fry their heads too. I feel like that's a big part of that shit too. A motherfucker see me doing, uh, see me doing this, and feel like I'm doing so well for myself, and it just feel like I have to. T- it's it's my obligation to take care of them. Oh well, you doing this? Break me off some shit. I'm like, well, I don't got to do that. I, anything I do is what I want to do. I don't I don't have a motherfucking obligation to do shit for, for nobody. You're not my motherfucking kid. I don't got no kids. It reminds me of the song Hollywood by August Alcina. You listen to August Alcina? No, I don't listen to August Alcina. Like, back, back, back in the day, back when he was, like, hot and shit, I was listening to that shit, though. His ass is hard. The, the concept of your guys' music reminds me of one another. The way he delivers it is more in a singing way. Yours is more of a rap slash singing. You know what I'm saying? But the concept overall, like, if, at least if you listen to his older shit, right? His Testify album. That's when he was hard. That's when he was hard. Like, that's when I was listening to him. Like, his ass was hard on bro. His second album was better, bro. The This thing called Life, that shit was hard. Because it's not just that street shit he's talking about. But now he's talking about the perspective of a 20-year-old who's going through all these life changes, right? And that's what his song Hollywood's about. Right here he says, uh, I done worked my way to the top because you know the grind, it don't stop. Just let me get my shine. If you still hating, then I'm sorry. And that's just one of it. But he he says something similar to what you just said, talking about how, you know, I don't owe you anything. I'm the one that worked to get here. And for you to sit here and tell me, like, where's my piece? You didn't do shit for me. Now you're calling me Hollywood because they say I'm Hollywood because a young living good. And that's when he says that shit. And it's like, damn, bro, you know, for real. At the end of the day, there's so many people that want what you have but are afraid to put in the work. They're afraid to take that risk. Put that motherfucking work in like <laughs> I did, bro. And I always say, like, anybody who say I'm Hollywood ain't really know me for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these motherfuckers, there's no way they're going to say they still here. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't know me for real. Going back to the success, you've reached the new heights every year and you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And maintaining those relationships becomes a little bit harder because you got new shit to focus on and some people don't understand that shit. How do you feel like you've managed to find that balance? I feel like everybody around that's around me right now, right? Like they all see the bigger picture. Like we all we dinner with each other like every week, like a couple of days out the week and shit. Everybody know what I'm doing. They see the bigger picture, so they know that okay, if I ain't picking, I and then whenever they call and shit, whenever a motherfucker call me, I always pick up. I always text back. So whatever you you OG, my shit, my phone be on like D and D and shit, but my shit is only not on D and D like for them, like you know, like what the little favorite shit. So they shit come through whatever. So they know if I'm if I'm not picking up or texting back or some shit. I'm most likely doing some rap shit, some music shit. So everybody see it now. Everybody that's with me see it now. I don't have to really do much. I just got to be myself and just be cool and just be a real nigga. But not only friendships, but relationships, right? 
and we're we're not we're not talking about girls because it seems like you don't give a fuck. You'll you'll cut them off no matter what. If a shorty tweaking and shit, like you gotta understand, a motherfucker be busy. Like I don't even be having time for myself sometimes. So if you get mad that a motherfucker busy, go get you a nigga that's not busy. Go get you a regular one. A regular motherfucker. Go get you a, a not busy motherfucker. Any nigga who has time for you twenty four seven is a broke nigga. That's a that's a fact. Anybody anybody who has time for you twenty four seven. Can't be doing shit with them, with their lives because they got time all the time. Right. They say a broke motherfucker don't got shit but time. He, he got he got time with us in the audacity, on bro. It's that Drake lyric, bro. It's uh, I can't convince you I love you for a living. I can't. It's not it's not my job and it's not what I'm going to make my priority. And that's just some shit that you gotta live by, especially when you're doing this shit that you're doing. Yeah. I don't even know. Now that you made it this far. What do you define success as? For me, it's being able to take care of myself and those closest to me. Like that—that's really what success is. Like it's not about having my fucking thirty chains on my neck and my fucking ten watches and braces and shit. It's being able to provide for those around me. For me, my brother, my sisters, my mom, my pops, my homies, like my managers. Everybody else, my OG members and shit, making sure they got money in their pockets and making sure they have a way to get money in their pockets through the music shit. Like, once I get on, on for real, I'm finna hire all, my, my whole staff to be my homies now. Like, it's, that's that's really what it's finna be. I already got my homies as my managers and shit. The rest of my staff, I put their ass on motherfucking, I don't know, figure some shit out. We just gonna put them on the payroll, figure it out yeah, later? Yeah, put their ass on the payroll. <laughs> Bro, this, this, this security right here. Oh, this is my personal assistant. I don't the fuck. I need. A, I don't know if I need a personal assistant, but that's my personal assistant though. Put him on payroll, on oh, bro. Say I'm in the studio, motherfucker. Help me finish a bar, okay? Yeah, we finna put him down as a uh, motherfucker songwriter on that bitch. I fuck with that mentality because you're really looking out for the people that you're coming up with. That's not something that a lot of people are willing to do. Facts. Because a lot of people are not willing to play their role. Yeah. Know your role. You'll reap the benefits as well. Exactly, hundred percent, bro. But you have to contribute to this shit just as much as I am. Yeah, you ain't finna be a motherfucker just sitting on your ass not doing shit. So real quick, I do want to touch on that toxic relationship shit, bro, because that's really how you got your start in this shit. It started off with that fuck love EP. <laughs> Hell yeah. How much of that plays a role in what you do now, right? You just made wedding ring. You ain't give a bitch a wedding ring. I'm like, <laughs> with these eyes, I didn't say many things. I never gave a bitch a fucking wedding ring. I might tell her that I love her. I say anything. It's, it's my fuckboy shit. I'm, I'm in my fuckboy era right now. And that, and, that, and that what they be saying, my fuck nigga era. I'm just single and enjoying life, man. But how much does it influence the music? That shit influence that shit a lot. Even like... Even now, I've been recording a lot more, like, heartfelt shit. I'm just talking about shit I went through in past relationships and shit like that. So that shit, really, that shit still affect me now. Like, that shit give me something to talk about. I could talk about some shit I went through motherfucking five years ago. Still feeling that shit. You know how they, they say? They say a nigga get his heart broke one time and he in eighth grade. It's like, fuck girls for the rest of his life. That's how this shit started, bro. Got my heart broken, started a podcast. Called Sad Boy. And, and now Foda. we're here 90 episodes later. No gang. Ooh, fuck up. That's how that shit be. That's why I started rapping this shit. I went through some fuck shit. I'm out for the drop a diss track about this bitch. I'm fuck it. And so I started doing that shit. Everybody getting that. This shit low key kind of hard. They like this shit sound like a boogie shit. And you said music was your way of journaling the way that you feel. Hell yeah, that shit like it's like it's like writing a motherfucking notebook, but I'm putting that bitch on a beat. You know what I'm saying? All that shit, all my music, like the shit when I be talking about my homies, them dying and shit. I be feeling the shit. All that shit, I put all that shit on wax. What do you feel like's the biggest thing that you've been able to confess in your music that you would have never been able to talk about? I say really just talking about kind of just like kind of just fighting depression and shit and just wondering, like, how would life be, like, if a motherfucker want hell? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what would, what would, how would life be like if I was on the outside just looking in on everything? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really talk about shit like that. You know, niggas don't really talk about their feelings and shit, but motherfuckers be going through shit sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So music is the, it's a way I can really be vulnerable with motherfuckers and motherfuckers won't judge me or try to give me their opinions and all that shit. So then what does that look like, right? If you weren't here, what the, what does that world look like to you? Like this world it is now. You know, like, it's fucked up to say. Like, once somebody dies, like, we mourn and shit for a little bit. And you think about them for the rest of your life and shit. 
Cause I think about my homies I lost motherfucking ten years ago. But it's like life gotta go on. It's just that's just how it is. It just has to go on. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just what it is. Life goes on. That's why when you out, that's why when you here living now, you gotta do everything you wanna do. Cause once you gone, you can't come back and do that shit. That shit gone. That's why you gotta leave your mark. I'm trying to leave my mark now. You know what I'm saying? What does that mark look like? I left my imprint on the world, my music, right now. Like, I got people that real life feel emotional and listen to my shit. Real life cry shit. This shit be motherfuckers therapy. Motherfuckers be telling me like, like you don't understand. Like your music that helped me in 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 more ways than you can imagine. And just that right there is good enough for me. You know what I'm saying? Like. If I can help a motherfucker going through a certain situation that they hear me talking about just by listening to that shit, because music is therapy. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So if I could do that, I done left my imprint, whether it's on one motherfucker or it's on a thousand motherfuckers or a hundred thousand motherfuckers. What's the role that mental health plays in your life? I feel like a lot of us don't really take mental health seriously. You know, like, and really I feel like especially in, like, the black community, they don't take mental health serious because they be like, Ain't shit wrong. I'm mentally strong, da 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 But that's cool, though. I feel like I'm one of the me- most mentally strong motherfuckers. But sometimes you get to that point where you just break sometimes, you know? You, you be strong for everybody else that you forget to be strong for yourself. And mental health plays a big role because you can't do this shit. I can't do this shit I'm doing right now with my mental health, health not on point. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be having to be around so much shit and around so many motherfuckers and shit. Like, I just be having to be on point mentally. It's a lot coming at you at one time. I always tell people that, right? If you're not mentally there, then you can't do anything you want in your life. You can't. The mental plays a big part of that shit. If I wasn't mentally here, I wouldn't be able to create. You know what I'm saying? I'd just be at a standstill and just be on some, man, fuck this. That's not true. Because if you weren't mentally there, you might create some crazy ass shit. And I have created shit when I was just mentally in a different space and shit. Mm Mm-hmm. But you still have to be there mentally, though, to even want to even get in a studio. You can be, I can be, I can get to a point where I don't need, and, and I'm not speaking this on myself. A motherfucker can get to a point where they don't even want to be in a studio at all. Like, fuck that. I'm talking about, like, not even just mentally because of shit that's going on, but a motherfucker, like, creatives get in their head and be like, man, this shit is taking too long. Like, I'm finna say fuck this shit. That's why people stop, because they mental beat them. That's why people stop rapping, because they mental beat them. And they just say, fuck that shit, it's never gonna happen. So if you're not mentally there in that sense, you over it. But being in different spaces mentally, whether you happy, whether you depressed, whether you kind of sad or whatever, it's, you're going to create some raw shit. You're yeah. going to create some different shit. That's the one thing that scares me the most when it comes to thinking like, then for it to one day, and I, I'm not speaking this shit on myself, but for it to one day get to the point where I'm like, fuck, man, this shit has been taking forever. And yeah. all this shit that you created for years... It's like, what the fuck was it for? That's what I'm saying. Why stop then? Like, the only way you fail 100%, it's only one way 100% you fail. It's literally only one way. You have to stop. Mm -hmm. When you stop, you fail already. That's the only way. As long as you keep going, you have a chance of making it. When you stop, you 100% fail. That's the only way 100% fail. They say, they say you miss all the shots you don't take. Take them bitches. It's better to have oh wells than what ifs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, bro. Oh, bro. And that's why all those people can say, oh, well, I fucked up with Steve-O, and now what if, right? <laughs> so with that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and close out, bro. I appreciate sure. you sliding. It's love, bro. I appreciate the conversation. I really hope to see you grow and, you know, continue to prosper, bro. And likewise, my guy. All right, guys, that's going to be all for today. Make sure you go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you go ahead and stream that OG Steve-O. The latest one was 50, right? Yes, sir. When's the next one drop? Y'all just gonna have to just see, man. Hopefully by the time this episode drops, it'll be some new shit up. There you go. All right, guys. Sad boys for real. Peace out. This is Sad Boy Radio.